Great crowds had followed Jesus throughout his three years of public ministry. They listened to him teach, watched him heal, and asked him to bless their children. Privately, Jesus had begun to prepare his disciples for what would happen soon during Passover in Jerusalem. Together, they shared some tender moments at the Passover meal. Yet it was difficult for the disciples to understand what the Master truly meant when he broke the bread and said that his body would also be broken for them, when he poured the wine and said his blood would be spilled for them. This was not the path to victory they expected their king to take. Later that evening, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was troubled and overwhelmed with sorrow as their king prayed, surrendering his life to his father's will, his closest friends slept. Suddenly, a large crowd of soldiers and officials sent by the chief priests arrived to arrest him. They were led by the betrayer, Judas, who approached Jesus and kissed him. The king had been identified, but instead of bowing in honor, the soldiers seized him and arrested him. Though Jesus had the power to escape, he surrendered willingly to all that was coming. Throughout the night, Jesus was dragged from one illegal trial to another. When Pilate, the Roman governor, asked him if he was the king of the Jews, Jesus simply replied, Yes, it is as you said. Jesus offered no other defense. In front of Herod, the king again remained silent. Herod and his soldiers put an elegant robe on him, mocked him, and then sent him back to Pilate. Trying to satisfy the mob that had been following Jesus from place to place, Pilate had Jesus beaten. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns, and they put a purple robe on him. They pretended to greet him as their king, and then they slapped him and spat on him. Finally, Pilate brought Jesus out to face 